everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about SAS front-end development library of FreeCodeCamp. So basically in this part of the problem we're going to work with the SAS and basically SAS is a language extension of CSS. So here we can manipulate CSS in a different way and SAS is kind of a sophisticated way of working with CSS and we're going to see right now. This will be a very short video but it's really interesting that you can see powerful things you can do with this. Okay, so let's just start. Here they're mentioning about storing data with SAS variables. So basically we can create variables to store colors to store the font family and so on and then instead of you reusing it multiple times the the same color we want we can just use the name of the variable we're creating okay so for example here we have to initialize with a dollar sign then we can say main fonts for example and then you say the proper the value of this property you have heading colors here and you can set to green and we're going to do something like this once you create this variable you're able to use in your classes or your ids here this variable and it will understand okay in our case we're going to create a variable called text color so here we're gonna create a variable called text color and we're gonna set this to red okay then we're gonna change the color property of the blog post so here we have the blog post instead of saying red we're gonna say dollar sign uh, text color and we should see everything in red as well if I change here to green we are going to change the color of the H2 to green as well, okay? So this is just an easier way of creating here variables and not repeating ourselves. The next one, we can nest CSS with SAS. So SAS allows us nesting a CSS rules, which is a useful way of organizing a style sheet. Normally we have this way, right? We use nav, nav ul, nav ul li to say that we're working with specifically with the li that is inside the ul that is inside the nav bar. But for a larger project in CSS with many lines, many tags we're able to create, we can be easy disorganized by this by doing this so here basically we can use the notation that we're seeing right now instead of using nav ulli we can open up the nav tag and then we can add the ul inside of the nav tag and the li inside of the ul okay and we're gonna do this exactly right now so basically we're gonna nest technique showing above like I said and we're gonna put the h1 okay so we're gonna put the h1 inside of our blog I'm gonna put this in here and we're gonna do put the paragraph as well Okay, and this is what we're seeing here right now. So we are nesting the H2 and the paragraph. Now we're gonna work with create a reusable CSS with mixing. So here it's kind of the same idea of creating a variable, but instead of creating a variable for one specific property, we can create a variable for one specific, one more complicated property in here, like we're seeing for this box shadow. This box shadow here, we have this web kit, we have four lines for describing one specific style that we wanna add. But instead of reusing this, we can create this at mixing and we create this structure for this box shadow so we just reuse in the future calling add include box shadow and we paste paste the the properties that we want so basically it's kind of creating a function and we change the values of x y blur and c according to the values we're passing when we're calling this specific mixing part okay so we're gonna do this for our border radius so here i'm gonna create a at mixing and i'm gonna say border radius Okay, then for the border radius, they're telling us to add a radius parameter. So here I'm gonna add a radius parameter, okay. And now what we're gonna do, inside we're gonna create here a border radius and the value will be dollar sign radius. And that's pretty much what we need in here. Now we're gonna use this border radius that we just created in our awesome, okay. So here in our awesome, we're gonna add a at include border radius and we're gonna pass the value of 15 pixels and it will create now do you see the change it created here the border radius that we were expecting if I paste here 30 it will give more rounded corners okay so basically we're creating kind of a function you can think like that uh, here it's telling us that we should use this prefix okay so I am fail at creating this part in here we're just adding the border radius we should add the web kit and the other one so let's do this in here basically this web kit this malls and the ms is for specifically different types of browsers that we're gonna work so here i'm gonna do border radius every time we have box shadow i'm gonna change to border radius and in here for all of this i'm gonna change to dollar sign radius okay and now we're working the correct way that they are expecting us to have great 
Now we're gonna work with the idea of if and else conditions in our CSS file. So basically, depending on the value of the variable, we can decide if we're going to have a different color, a different size of border, uh, or other things, okay? So we can add this idea of if and else. So basically, in here we're gonna add our mixing, and they're telling us to create uh, the mixing called border stroke. Okay, that takes the parameter vowel. So this is pretty much what we have in here. Now that we have this parameter, parameter vowel, depending on the case, here we have medium. And medium, they are expecting to have three pixels solid and black, the border. So we're gonna create this style, okay? Let's start creating the if statement. So at if dollar vowel is equals to light, this is the first scenario, light, okay? What are we gonna do? We're going to open up here the curly bracket and we're gonna create here this structure for this. Okay, so border will be equal to one pixel solid black. Okay, so for example, if I change here to light, we're supposed to see what we just did or not. <laughs> we're gonna see in a bit, let me go back in here. Actually, we were able to see it because it's very light. Do you see here we have a line, a black line in here. Now let's create for medium. So here we're gonna do a else if dollar $val is equals to medium. We're gonna do border, three pixels, solid, black. So now we're gonna see more bordering here, okay? Else if dollar $val is equals to heavy, we're gonna create a different border that will be six pixels, solid, black, all right? And else here, they're telling us to give none. So here, border, none. And let's see. So now, if I change here to heavy, we're gonna see more border. And if I don't pass anything, we're not gonna see any border. If I say here high, for example, we're not gonna see any border, okay? So this is really good because depending on the case, we can select what will be the style. Now we're gonna work with a for loop to create a sass loop. So for loop here, 